Setting up start and end dates is a tricky thing in my courses. And so you really have to understand when you set these start and end dates up, how it affects the student's experience. This is going to be a series of tutorials that are going to show you how setting up start and end dates affect the student's experience when putting them on modules, when putting them on drop boxes, discussions, and quizzes. And not only that, but how they affect what you're doing in the course content area, which is where I'm at right now, and what happens in the submission review tab area. And the submission review tab area is where the discussions, drop boxes, and quizzes list is found. So this first tutorial is going to explain what happens when I place dates on a module. So I'm in the course content here, and if I go ahead and place um, a start and end date on the module, and I'm going to put this into the future as to when this tutorial is being done, and I'll set the start date in the future here, or the end date. I'm going to go ahead and update that. So this is telling me that on January 30th this module will open, and then it'll end on February 2nd. What I'm going to do is show you this from the student's perspective and show you what happens. And I'm not putting any start or an end date on the individual uh, quizzes, drop boxes, or discussions. So now let me show you from the student's perspective. When I come in as a student, you'll notice that it tells me that Module 1 is not available. So I cannot see anything, nor can I see any of the directions or the instructions on the, on the discussion or the drop box or the quiz. I can't access it here. But if I'm a student, what you have to realize is I can go to the Submission Review tab, and this is Week 1 Discussion, click on Discussions, and Week 1 Discussion is completely open. I can go to the Submission Review tab and go to the drop boxes, and there's Project 1, and Project 1 is completely open. I can go to the Submission Review tab and go to the quizzes, and the quiz is completely open. So the bottom line is, by setting start and end dates on a module, it doesn't necessarily restrict the student from being able to do any of the um, discussions, drop boxes, or quizzes. And so one of the things that some faculty get freaked out about is that I put start and end dates on the module thinking that those, the students can't get to the quiz and somehow the students have taken quiz, the quiz for week six and it's week two. And that's because you didn't put the, the dates on the individual items. I'll go back out as a, as a student here and explain that the bottom line from uh, the best practice perspective is unless you really, really want to put start and end dates on a module and you want to restrict the student from getting to those modules, then go ahead and do it. But make sure you understand that you also will have to put start and end dates, the same start and end dates on the individual uh, quizzes, drop boxes, and uh, discussions. So from a management standpoint, when you, uh, when you copy your course for the next semester, you're going to be doing extra work. So unless you really want to turn have these dates on here, I wouldn't, and I would put the dates on the individual quizzes, drop boxes, and discussions.